So hi everyone, um, Mark told me that uh, this will be one of the exotic talks of the evening and uh, after seeing, uh, watching two of the talks I understand that this is maybe because my talk will be 100% code free. Uh, so you will only be uh, looking at pretty images that I did of course. Um, so the, yeah, I did this one. Um, I, I didn't really ask Mark if he liked it. I, I guess. Uh, he's happy with it because it's reproduced everywhere. Um, I was really happy to see. Um, it, it doesn't happen to me that I, uh, I get to do print design or designs that are um, getting printed on, on T-shirts. And it was great to come in today and see all the stuff wearing these T-shirts. Um, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to see you all wearing this. I hope those t-shirts don't uh, become like every other conference t-shirt, uh, sleeping t-shirt, right? So I hope you use it. <laughs> um, so I hope you guys use it. And if you do, uh, do take a picture and tag me. I will be so happy to make a post on my website uh, about this and make other letters really jealous. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy about this design, especially considering the circumstances in which it was, uh, in which it was made. I had a baby uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, it's already two months almost. Um, and five days before my due date, I was working, you know, um, on commissions. Um, that's uh, the privilege that uh, freelancers have. They work until last minute. And I get an email from, from Mark uh, asking if I could uh, do the design for this um, conference. And I said yes, uh, but if I don't get back to you in two or three days, then I might be at the hospital having my child, so go ahead and search for plan B. Um, this didn't happen until later, so I could do the design and deliver it on time. And then my child came and um, time flew and I realized that I had to come here to talk. Um, so this is me preparing this talk. Uh, I know. <laughs> um, so my, my new working space is a bit busier now. I have a few projects going on and I have one of them has a very demanding client. Um, <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, I have to multitask a lot now. Um, but yeah, it's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, my husband saw me putting this slide on the presentation and he told me, he reminded me that I once said that I, um, um, I, f yeah, I find really bad when people put pictures of babies or cats on presentations. So now I, I, I find okay that they put pictures of babies. Uh, cats are still um, unacceptable. Um, <laughs> So yeah, uh, this is me preparing this presentation. Um, so welcome everyone to Berlin. By the way, um, all the imagery you will see is done by me. Um, so sometimes it will be related to what I say, sometimes it won't, but you will have to sort of switch between what I say and uh, what you're seeing. Um, so Berlin, I, I wasn't born here. I was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina. But um, I'm one of these people with a big career turn, and Berlin has a lot to do with that. Um, I actually became a letterer at the same time I moved to Berlin. And for me, becoming a letterer meant, um, meant to, um, to actually introduce myself as a letterer. Um, like, hi, my name is Martina, I'm a letterer. Um, and to clean up my website of all the things that I did and that I didn't want to do anymore. So those were two radical things that kick off my career. Um, to actually introduce myself as what I am or, or what I wanted to become at that time. And um, to show the work that I wanted to get more from. One thing you should know about Berlin for those who don't live here um, is that it's one of the uh, cities with uh, most designers working with type and typography in the world. Um, there is a lot of events about typography here. There is um, 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 meetings um, where people only uh, speak about type, fonts, and, and typography. 
there is a conference about the topic. Um, there is a vibrant community of designers um, that work and make a living of this. Um, and um, there's even a museum of letters, the Bookside Museum. I, I strongly recommend you to go there if, you, if you're staying a few days in town. Um, so yeah, typography and type design are very serious um, subjects um, in, this, in this city. Um, and yeah, and when, when I moved here, actually, this, this was a big fear for me because um, here typography is taken so serious, uh, topic as, uh, topics as um, readability, legibility, um, uh, usability, functionality, um, and clean shapes are uh, essential here. And these are all things that my work doesn't necessarily pursue. Um, my work is rather the opposite than this. Um, it's explosive, it's colorful, it's, um, it's pretty pictures, actually. Um, and um, I work with letter shapes, but this, this is not um, something I necessarily pursue. I don't pursue functionality or um, readability at times. Um, so I, I was um, pretty, um, yeah, I was pretty intimidated by this community here in Berlin. Um, also my work, since it is how it is, sometimes the line between art and design is a bit blurry. So um, a lot of times the sort of work I do um, depends a lot on whether that's a personal work or a commission or a commercial commission and whether the client that is asking for that particular piece is asking me to show my voice through it or to express a certain thing about you know, a product or a, a book or um, a certain article. So, um, yeah, I came to Berlin and, you know, the community actually really welcomed me and they were really um, um, looking forward to see how I did things and, um, yeah, and, and actually the way the community is here um, triggered my work in an unexpected way. My work became more colorful, um, more expressive, um, yeah, more complex. A, a, a colleague of mine calls it, something's wrong with my microphone? Okay. Um, a colleague of mine calls it um, um, contemporary baroque because it's layer over layer of information. So over letters you have decorative elements, texture, um, and the, the, the pieces get really complex. So I told you, 100% code free, pretty pictures. <laughs> yeah, so in this, in this five years, I, I've been running my studio for five years already in custom typography and lettering. And, and I'm a one woman studio and I have been doing so much. Um, um, this is, this is a piece I did for, that is hanging on my studio wall to sort of explain my colleagues and clients what, what my work is about. Um, so as I was telling you, telling stories, creating an atmosphere, um, um, yeah, creating a mood with letter shapes, right? Um, so another thing, another good thing about Berlin is that we are surrounded by pieces of lettering here. Um, if you're not living in town, I recommend you to um, walk around looking at, um, you know, store facades. You will still find a lot of gems um, in the city. Um, and in, in the past, uh, doing lettering had a lot to do with uh, handwork. Most of these uh, pieces were made uh, on paper, probably, and then executed on metal or wood or, um, um, neon, but I bet the, the designers of these of this signs were working the same way we work nowadays with typography or with lettering. I can imagine the designer of this um, um, store facade um, was, you know, um, aiming to make this store look friendly and inviting and therefore he used uh, these chubby rounded shapes um, 
and um, he chose a proper color scheme uh, to convey the idea that the, the store is selling flowers and, and plants. Or this guy wanted to uh, make this um, um, coffee house look uh, modern and, and cool at that time, right? So I call this one um, wood lettering, sausage lettering, which pretty much fits the, 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 store of, uh, the concept of the store. So I think he, he, the designer of this one really nailed it. Um, so yeah, the guys doing this probably work mainly by hand, right? And nowadays, yeah, we work a lot uh, with, with uh, computers. Um, but I actually think that the tools, the digital tools that we, um, that we have nowadays don't necessarily eliminate the other tools, the, the analog tools. So um, in a way, our set of tools have become bigger. Um, so, and, and this is great from our times, that we can actually choose the tools we, we can work better with. We, we don't necessarily need to use um, digital tools all the time. Um, my work is mainly digital. All, all the pictures you saw are created uh, on the computer. However, I work a lot by hand. Um, so I sketch a lot. Um, that's more or less how I will... Um, start a lettering piece. I would start with a, a very rough sketch and then, you know, move step by step into a more refined um, result. Um, I use my sketches and I, I, I use sketch, uh, sketches to, to work and I also show it to my clients. So there is a moment of the sketching process where I scan this uh, sketch and I send it to the client. Perhaps I will send it along with a color scheme um, and this is the moment where we will discuss about changes or things or um, whether we like the composition or whether we, um, we think the color scheme doesn't work or... Um, so in the sketch, um, the, in the sketching phase is where I... Um, where the client and I find a middle point or, a, you know, a, a, you know, we agree whether that uh, the, the direction works or not, and uh, I can move on to the digital drawing. Um, I use sketches a lot because drawing letters is an incredibly slow-moving job. And um, as I said, I run a one-woman studio, so when I started working with lettering full-time, I realized that I had to improve my working flow. I had to be able to um, first do multiple uh, commissions at the same time, and um, second, um, be able to work with agencies and publishing houses, which they usually have, they usually have very quick turnaround. No? Um, so yeah, and especially when I have this, you know, contemporary Baroque style, uh, beside, besides drawing letter shapes, I also have to deal with um, um, decorative elements and texture, and this all sums up into a very time-consuming job. Um, so it happens to me that I come, I come from work um, sometimes and my husband asks me, hey, how, how was it? What did you do today? And I, sometimes I really don't know what to answer because perhaps I spend the whole day drawing a word or uh, drawing an N and a an T and not even uppercase letters, but lowercase letters. It, it's really a, a very time-consuming job. Um, so I had to come up with a technique um, where I could, um, you know, work fast. This is a commission I did for the Washington Post uh, a newspaper, and they had, um, I had to deliver this uh, artwork two days, um, in two days, and um, I also, I gladly had this time shift, which is uh, with the US, which gave me eight, uh, ex eight extra hours, so I was delivering the job at 2 a.m. in the morning, and they were getting it on time um, at 6 p.m. in the U.S. Um, so a lot of designers stop working with, with, um, with sketches. How many of you work with sketches here? Do you? Okay, a lot. So how many of you show it to your clients? Oh, God. Okay, I, I, I really understand why you don't, and... Um, but I also think that our clients can actually get used to um, 
to work with sketches. We, sometimes we underestimate our clients. Um, and my clients got used to, to work with sketches, and um, this is something they know upfront when we start a commission. Um, but this is an example commission why, to, exp to tell you how, uh, why I'm rooting so much for, for sketching. This is a, I got this commission from the, uh, the US magazine 5280, um, and they needed to do um, um, you know, a cover for uh, a, a page of opener for, for um, a catalog they do. Um, so they sent me the brief, um, they sent me the text, um, and um, it had a pretty quick turnaround. Um, so I did a sketch, I sent it to them at the next day, and um, I got an email from the art director, and he said, like, w w we love it. Um, we love the direction, uh, but this is not the text we, we want to have. Um, actually, the text we want to have are those three words over, the, over there. Um, so I had drawn over, you know, in lettering world, um, the more words is the more work. So I have drawn more than 10 words, and actually the, the job was about three words. Um, so I could say, well, I'm sorry, that, that was my mistake, and three hours later, deliver um, a sketch with the text they wanted to have, we could discuss about it, and I could deliver the, um, you know, the final artwork in time. So this, working with sketches and working fast, saved um, my relationship with the client, saved the job, saved my time. Um, so yeah, long live sketching. Um, and although I, I love working with sketch, you know, I think uh, working with sketch is very good. I spend 95% of my time um, with computers and a lot of that time on social networks and I bet I'm not the only one in this room. Uh, so, um, and I invest a lot of time on putting my work, you know, on social networks and I actually own the place um, that I gain in lettering and, and typography, um, I own it in, in a big part, in a big portion to uh, the social networks. Um, I did a project uh, a, a while ago that was taking place online and also on the social networks, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, um, that was called lettering versus calligraphy. Um, perhaps some of you know it, uh, perhaps uh, some don't, so I will explain shortly what it was about. Um, I put this together with a colleague of mine, the Italian calligrapher Giuseppe Salerno, so he was acting as the calligrapher, I was acting as the letterer, and what we basically uh, did here is to you know, to do an online competition. So he will, um, we would draw the same letter um, under, the, the, uh, under the same keyboard, and we will execute it, I will execute it with the letter, lettering on the left, and he will execute it with um, um, calligraphy on the right. Um, yeah, and we will upload it and the people could vote on the website. Um, so, the whole concept of it was to actually compare both techniques, right? Uh, many times, um, uh, calligraphy and lettering are, you know, mistake, uh, are, are seen as the same thing. Um, and although they might look similar at times, they actually have very different processes. Um, calligraphy is essentially writing, and lettering is essentially drawing. And the process, the way of doing these two things has uh, an impact on the process and therefore on the result. But we have all this very conceptual idea behind it. Um, but actually, I think the, 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 the thing that made the trick of the, of the project or the thing that made the project successful was this little thing under the, um, you know, under the image where the people could vote and could see us fall down publicly, um, and um, they could actually, um, yeah, they, they were exercising their right to be mean uh, with this little button. So you, you, we, we had over 2,000 hits on our website per day, and people were going crazy voting for either of us. So these are some of the things we produced at that time. 
So we were experimenting a lot, I have to say. Um, I, we were trying a lot of different materials, um, yeah, a lot of different styles. And it was a very exciting project for us. And in a way, what, what was really good from this is that we could prove others and ourselves uh, what we could do um, with the, the things, uh, with, with lettering, uh, me with lettering and him with um, calligraphy. The wild pea. So yeah, and we created a, a great library of letters. With, we draw over 200 letters each. Um, I draw, and he wrote uh, 200 letters. Um, and this is a useful resource that um, you know keep inspiring people and myself. I have I have to admit that sometimes when starting a commission, I go online and I check and I check on the library of letter, uh, letters, and I, I say, okay, I will do something in, with this style, or, uh, yeah, I pick up on that to, to do my work. Um, so I put a lot of effort on, you know, maintaining this, this balance between um, personal projects or side projects, if you, if you like to call it like this, and commercial work, I think, I think commercial work is essential for designers and developers. Um, it's, it's just, you know, it's, our, it's the only way to actually have an impact on, on real life. Um, but you, when, when doing work for a client, many times the clients will come after something that they saw on your website, this, they saw on your portfolio. And um, this is, this is also good. I mean, you, you can actually reaffirm something you do and you can take it to the next level. But at the same time, you can, become, you can easily become a one-trick pony where you, you know, repeat the same thing over and over. So that's why I think um, maintaining this balance between personal projects and, um, or doing personal projects um, creates new artwork that the clients will come after. Um, so this is another project of mine. Um, it's called Letter Collections. It's also online. Um, and the goal is much easier than the other one, is to produce 100 postcards that I will send um, around to colleagues and friends. And um, yeah, and the idea is basically to produce a piece of work and send it, uh, send it around and put it online so other people can actually send the postcard digitally to friends or, um, yeah, family. Um, so, you know, the, the most important thing about the, this project is actually that I put a piece of my work out there, um, which, is, which is, yeah, the ultimate goal of my work. Um, because I believe that if you don't put your work out there, then you cannot kick off this domino effect of creativity where one idea leads to the other and the other and the other, right? Um, so whatever you are doing that uh, stays, um, you know, in a folder in your computer and doesn't see the light, then um, doesn't really have an impact on real life. Um, so I, I love to put my work out there, but I have to admit that um, everything is out there. So under the hashtag lettering, you will find a lot of different things. Um, I bet a lot of you are on Instagram, so I wanted to do something with you now live. Um, just grab your phones, go to Instagram, open your Instagram. Follow me on this one. Are you following? <laughs> um, if you don't have Instagram, then you can do it with, um, yeah, the person sitting next to you. Um, so you can go and search for the hashtag lettering. I would do that too. Tags. Oh, internet is slow. Okay, I'm there. Are you there? It's almost two million posts 
on, uh, under the hashtag, hashtag lettering. So normally, what half of what you will find here um, under the hashtag lettering is calligraphy. So it's, as I said, essentially writing. Um, some examples here are, well, there's a girl over there writing. With, uh, there's a video on the right, on the right hand of a girl writing, and that's under the hashtag lettering. Um, so most of what you find is lettering. And um, a big part also of that is street art. Um, and of course, all these things um, um, under, you know, under the same stream, the, you know, under the hashtag lettering, you have all these things. And it's really hard to tell if you're not, if you don't have a trained eye, it's really hard to tell good from bad, it's really hard to, and I understand it, you don't necessarily have, and not everyone necessarily have to uh, have a trained eye in typography. Um, but it's, it's really hard to say uh, what's good and what's bad, what's good lettering, what's, uh, what's bad lettering. Um, so I was thinking, when I was preparing this presentation, I was thinking, why do people come to conferences, right? Uh, besides meeting colleagues and friends and drinking beer, uh, but you also come uh, to conferences to see how other people do work and, um, and to also think about the way you do work uh, yourself. Um, and I think conferences are good places uh, to set standards. Where Brad just did, uh, he just set some standards for uh, you know, creating um, a web for, a, for an enterprise. So um, I thought this is something you, I want you to take away from my talk besides looking at pretty images, uh, but that you go home and you have some criteria at least to look at uh, lettering and um, be able to judge or be able to filter from good and bad. Um, so I have five points. Uh, one of them is consistency. Um, and this relates to having a few design decisions that are consist consistently applied on a piece. Um, so this is a cover I did for New Statesman um, magazine in the UK. Um, the topic was clearly Israel uh, and the conflict in Israel. And I, I wasn't necessarily... A, a necessar um, I didn't have to necessarily say my opinion about the topic, but to you know let the reader know that this uh, this um, issue is um, about Israel. Um, so I used um, Israeli a, a contemporary take on Israeli mosaics, and uh, you know this idea of um, um, of carpets, and uh, I use all these elements. Um, consistently across all the letter shapes. Um, I also created new letter shapes from, um, from um, brush strokes from Hebrew calligraphy. Um, and this decision is applied on um, all the letter shapes, right? So all the elements in this, um, there's a few design decisions that are you know, um, that are working on each of the letter shapes in this, um, in this piece. This is another uh, piece I did for um, the Empire magazine, uh, for the Jameson Empire Awards, that's a little bit like the Oscars, but in UK. Um, so the idea was, or the brief was to do a sort of 20s inspired um, um, piece, like uh, sort of the Great Gatsby. So I used these um, elongated shapes for all the letter shapes. And if you look closely, um, although the letter shapes or the different styles are pretty different from each other, they all um, you know, share this weird uh, proportion to it. And of course, a color scheme that works um, on the whole piece. No? So after five years of working for uh, of working here in in Germany, um, I said that Berlin uh, was very important to to kick off my career. But actually, um, in the last five years, I've been only working for or mainly working for U.S., uh, United Kingdom, 
Australia, Spain. Um, I hardly got any commission from Germany. Um, and I'm really happy about this, um, not only because it's a football magazine that is asking a woman to design their cover and main article, that's groundbreaking, uh, but also um, because I feel now that um, lettering is starting to be a part of the design mix of um, a lot of enterprises and uh, media and magazines. Um, so I'm celebrating this right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, they invited me to design this cover. Um, so there is a, a design decision that has to do with um, the, the production. Uh, I, I created those images on, um, in digital and I printed it in, on, on Resoprint. Um, it's a printing technique and creates this sort of effect on the, on the type. Um, and although the, you know, the inner illustrations are not exactly as the cover, um, you know, they, they are related to each other. They are sharing the same criteria and design decisions. I love this bread. I would just leave it there for a while for appreci appreciation. I love how the image works and I, I think everything sits where it has to sit. Um, so yeah, cheers to that. Cheers to um, Germany starting to use lettering in their design work. Um, the second um, criteria for judging good from bad lettering is custom. Um, lettering has to be done for a certain application that wouldn't be the same without it. Uh, so this is a spread for Cosmopolitan magazine. So I come from a football magazine to uh, Cosmopolitan magazine, um, and yeah, and the pictures don't make sense without the lettering and the other way around uh, as well. So it is tailored for this spread, um, and they are meant to be, sort of. So this is another spread I made for another German cl client, the Spiegel uh, magazine, um, and um, this number was about Gelassenheit, that's serenity. I think the translation in English would be something like serenity. And, um, you know, the, the idea was to, um, the word Gelassenheit was um, originated in the medieval time, so the idea was to um, create an imagery that sort of pick up on that. Um, but as well, um, the spread and the headline, everything works together, and they don't really make sense um, if they are not, yeah, if, if they are not on the same page. So lettering can also be custom for a space. This is a, a piece I did quite a long time ago uh, for the offices of Etsy here in, in Berlin. They, they, they were opening their first offices, and um, yeah, they wanted to celebrate it, so I did a sort of confetti, um, serpentine-inspired uh, lettering, and I executed it on their... I look so young! <laughs> uh, I executed it on their uh, um, offices, and this confetti um, ran across the floor and the ceiling, so it really changed the space in a way. Um, so the space is, I, sorry, the space is now, yeah, it looks different. Um, and it, the, the lettering was custom for that space and that occasion, right? So another very important um, um, criteria is uh, detail. Um, this is what I think uh, makes lettering a very distinctive tool for design. Um, lettering has a great advantage, which is normally you're working with a couple of letters or with a couple of words. Um, so you can dedicate a fair amount of time to work on the details. Um, this um, doesn't happen to type designers, for instance, where they have to, uh, you know, type designers create fonts um, and they, um, you know, they have to create an alphabet that works on all possible combinations. So um, 
the, the more detail uh, you put on, you know, you, you cannot actually work, or it's very hard to work with this amount of detail because um, the project will get uh, just endless if you have to do um, all this detail across the whole alphabet and, you know, punctuation marks and um, accents. And so this is a commission I did for also a US magazine um, a variety where I had to do you know, this limited set of um, figures, and I could dedicate a fair amount of time to add detail to all of them, and um, there's not uh, no copy-paste anywhere, so it, it really took a long time. I really dedicated a long time to um, each one of them. This is a card I did. Um, for my studio last year to send to uh, colleagues and, and clients. Um, and, you know, it was a very detailed work of figuring out what makes uh, decorative design into a stencil. Because I, what I did is to stencil the card in the envelopes in which the card was sent out. <laughs> so, um, and I did, I did around 200, and I, I, um, I sprayed every one of them. So the idea of making it happen was actually, you know, I was making it happen. Um, so yeah, there's a fair amount of detail into, you know, figuring out what, what makes uh, this lettering hold together to create a stencil. And this was laser cut later um, on cardboard, right? Um, so a story, is the piece that you're working on conveying or telling the story you want to tell? Um, I love designing book covers. I, I've done a couple of uh, some, yeah, a few of them uh, in the last years. This one I did for HarperCollins' uh, Harper publishing house. Um, and it's a thriller that takes place in Mexico for, um, for young teenagers. Um, so, I, and I, what I love about good book covers is that, um, you know, you have to sort of sum up um, whatever the writer tells in 300 pages into one imagery, and also that the sales depend a lot on you. Um, but in this case, the story I wanted to tell was not necessarily scary, but intriguing enough for, um, for yeah, for young teenagers. That's another uh, cover I did for Walker Books in the UK. Um, and it's a story about three sisters in the Victorian time. So it's a pretty simple, um, it was a pretty simple concept. Uh, and I focus on, on you know, um, um, placing the story in a certain time, uh, um, yeah, in a certain time in the Victorian time. Um, so, and ultimately, and most important, uh, good letter shapes. Um, a lettering piece should have right, consistent, well-crafted letter shapes. Uh, they should be excellent. Um, so, bottom line, excellent letter shapes um, done uh, in a, uh, applying a consistent um, design decision, applied consistently to the um, to the design um, that is custom for a certain application uh, with a fair amount of detail, uh, telling the story you want to tell. Um, those are the five things you need to have um, to create a good lettering. Um, it sounds so easy, right? Um, but I wanted to share these concepts um, with you um, because I think that in a way, our challenge as you know, designers, uh, as professionals in whatever we uh, field we work in, um, is to be able to filter um, good things out of the stream of things that are out there, right? Um, and for this, we need to define standards. Um, and that's why um, you go to a workshop, that, that's why you study, that's why you read a book, um, that's why you come to conferences. So I hope um, 
you get something of this talk, which is some standards to identify good lettering um, from bad lettering. If you didn't, then come ask me. I will be around. Uh, I promise not to show too many baby pictures. So thank you. <laughs>